Okay, so this is after their first shed. And look at how many spots they have. So it's become even more apparent on Chris. Chris is the one right in front here. All over them are spots, right? But then look at the other one, and it has a lot of dark spots too. And I know that one at least shed, and I'm pretty sure Chris did as well. But they're real light right now, which is pretty strange. But they've been pooping like crazy, or defecating like crazy. And they have been, they've shed. And now they look way cooler, which is awesome. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, today's weighing day. So I'll weigh them and do that part of that video. I just wanted to show you guys because that's really awesome. I mean, they're like, they're super dark and everything, which is, or not dark, they're really light right now, but like they have lots of Dalmatian spots, which is really cool. Hello, so in the weighing video earlier this week, I talked a ton and then I cut it, most of it out because it was just random stuff. There was actually a couple of pretty good video ideas, so I'll do those way in the future or something like that. But I did also feed the babies on November 7th, so I'm going to release this video as that and I weighed them and fed them and I'm just going to do that in this video. So if you want to watch the weighing of everybody, go watch the last one. This one will have bits and pieces from the last one, but really everything I say and do in here is pretty much cut out from that one. So it's not at all the same video, but it's mainly about uh, Chris and Finnick because the other one's named Finnick. I think I might say you can name him. His name is Finnick, I decided. Anyway, that's this video, and I hope that you guys enjoy. If you like this video, like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns at any point in the video, feel free to comment, and then subscribe if you like content. So, enjoy. So here we have the babies. And I have some food stuff here. And... I will probably have to move them around a bit. So here, they're right out here. You can see them. And they pooped, so I gotta get out their bedding. And pretty soon, I wanna, I, I really wanna weigh them because at a certain point, when they're about 2 0.21 ounces, I'm gonna feel comfortable in moving them into a five gallon, a bioactive five gallon, because that's how big Teddy was when I moved her in. That's what I did with her and that's what then I'll feel comfortable with doing with them. So I'm going to go ahead and feed them first, then I will weigh them, and then I will clean their enclosure. So generally I like to feed them, then clean their enclosure, so then I'm not wasting my time, because <laughs> generally I'll end up getting the food places while I try to feed them. So here we just have, let's take out Chris first. So I'll generally take them out, because it's just easier to get them to eat that way. And I always leave food in with them, but I also like to make sure that they're eating pretty well. And it seems to be working pretty well because they, they defecate pretty readily. <laughs> so that's good. Let's see if I can just get this, set this over here. And I'll take this out. Which is pretty, I don't, I guess I don't realize how often the adults defecate because I don't clean up after them, the isopods do. So it's just not something that I notice. But these guys defecate quite a lot, which is part of the reason why I want to move them into the bioactive enclosure. So this one will generally, like it's been eating very consistently quite a lot. But it's kind of, it's hard sometimes to get it to do that. There it goes. Come on. There we go. Ah. <laughs> okay, now it's gonna try to jump on my bed, I'm sure. Oh, let's not go down there. Let's go in here. I'm not sure how smart they are, to be honest. So, like with the adult crushed geckos, generally, and I'm going to say generally because this isn't all the time, but most of the time, if I hold them out far away from stuff, they won't try to jump. 
I'm not sure that these guys are like that, so I don't try to test it too much, but generally that's the case with crushed geckos. If they don't really see anywhere to jump to, then they won't jump. Which, considering I have to hand feed all of them, it's better if they don't jump around everywhere. So, like sometimes the adults will just try to climb up my arm and stuff. But generally I can get them just to eat a bit and then I'm done. Or eat, you know, like a good amount. If they don't, then I kind of have to do this, where I kind of put up to his, put him up to his face. Now this one will take it, generally, if I put it up to his face. Now Chris will not. And I just, I haven't named this one. I don't really know what to name it. So if you want to name it, put it down in the comments, and go ahead, and I'll look through that if you want. It might already be named by the time that this video comes out, but I don't know. I'm kind of just leaving it unnamed, so I have the opportunity to do it later. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and weigh it. Now the problem is trying to get onto this. Now, I weighed Chris, like, right after he was born. And gee whiz, no way. This has to be... Oh wait, that makes sense. Okay. I gotta even it out. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? There's no way. So now, let's try to get on here. And just stay there for a second. Okay, so it says 0 .07, which would be the same, and I doubt that. That kind of seems weird to me. They've, I feel like they've grown a lot since they were born, but maybe that's just because I've been around them a lot. I'm not entirely sure. That's what it says, and I don't have a weight for this one before. I only have one for Chris, so I'm imagining that Chris hasn't grown any yet, considering that he generally eats less, and... That's just crazy. I don't know. They've been alive for a couple weeks, I think. So, it's just, that's pretty surprising to me. But, that's not a problem, I don't think. And I don't know what that is in ounces, or in grams, if you're wondering. I'm not entirely sure. When I get a caliper for the turtles, I'll switch over and start using the metric system. So, as you can see, this is Christopher's reaction. He's like his father. <laughs> Just doesn't want to go for the food. Unless it's like forced upon him. I mean, they could be eating on the off days that I don't feed them. I don't feed them myself, but I'm not entirely sure. I just, I don't really know. So, I'm always an off it though, until it gets, you know, until they get to a certain point, and then I'll just, just hand feed them. Unless I can get them to properly be eating from the bowl. If I can do that, then I will do that. So, to go on further with that, without spoiling too much, I have quite a few crest geckos now, at this point of editing and everything, it's about February 12th of 2021, and I know my videos are pretty backed up. What's going to happen is that I will get to summertime, and then in my time, I'll probably take a couple weeks and edit all of my videos, uh, which is a horrible process, by the way. It's, it's very time-consuming. But anyway, then I can just get them all uploaded, and then I won't have to worry about videos for like a couple months, and that's probably what's going to end up happening. And then I can work on other projects during the summer. But anyway, so far with my breeding of crested geckos and getting babies, I've had limited success with them eating on their own. But some of the newer babies just refuse to eat for me as far as me hand feeding them. So they must only eat on their own because I'm not hand feeding them. And I always leave food in for them. So I assume that's what's happening because they must be eating something. So that kind of forces them to eat on their own. And it's going to be interesting to see how fast they grow compared to these guys. This is actually going pretty well. In general, he'll generally crawl around everywhere. So it makes it a lot easier when they don't do that. Which is nice. So it'll be interesting to see what they're like as adults. I'm going to be keeping these two. Because, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what they're like as adults. Because I've been hand feeding them since, like, the day after they were born. So, it's just going to be weird to see how they react their entire lives to this type of thing. 
because all the other all my other animals I've I've never had animals that I've had like the entire time I never get baby animals I I take in animals so none of my crest geckos I've had since they were babies as I said I, I, I had Teddy since she was pretty small not as small as these guys but pretty small and uh, it I don't know. It was pretty similar to this, so that's nice. It's not all too different, which is helpful. So I have some experience with it. But even still, she was kind of stubborn about eating, kind of like he he is. But she would eat dubia roaches a lot. These guys haven't exactly taken to them. Shoot, I did it again. <laughs> I need to wave the lid separately. So the lid is really helpful, especially with crest geckos, because... They um, they will jump onto the lid so here, like that, and then I can set the lid on top. So it's just the same again, which is all right. So in general, they're about 0 0.07 ounces when they're born, and two grams. If you were, if you wanted to know. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure them real quick. So one thing about the babies is they tend to keep their tails back pretty straight, as he is demonstrating now. So, uh, let's go like this. So it should be decently easy to figure out what their lengths are, if I can get them off me. Ugh. There we go. On to the lid. Let's see if I can get them to straighten out a bit. Okay, there we go. Let's see, I know he was three inches when he was born. And now I'd say about three and a half. Or maybe three and a quarter. So I could I could be a little bit wrong off on what his original weight was or original length. I don't know that he grew, you know, a full quarter of an inch. That's quite a lot, but I just know that that's what he is now. So I could I could have gotten his his length a little bit long originally. So here I'm gonna try to get the other one and get it. Now they're gonna be pretty similar, but I'm gl glad I have like two to compare because they're not going to be the same because like, you know, they generally, animals just don't, they generally grow differently. So it's, it's cool to be able to get two different stuffs, <laughs> two different information at the same time, two different things. Let's see if I can get it to go on something other than me and other than, other than the plant. Onto this. Now, and onto that. There we go. Yeah, probably three and a quarter as well. So, very similar. I have a feeling that the one that eats more is going to grow faster. I don't know where I have that crazy idea, but I think that that is going to be the case. So, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So, what I'm going to do now is Get a separate container to put them in temporarily. And this is what I always do. Jeez. So I'm just going to get them to go into this one. Let's see. Um, I want to wash off the plant. I generally like to wash off everything with a fake plant, which I'm tired of already. I really hate fake plants, but it's just been easier, I guess. Supposedly easier. I don't know. I would like to put them into a bioactive, but like I said, I want to get them to a certain size before I do that, simply because I want to make sure that they're eating and doing everything well, and the isopods I have in my bioactive tanks are really large, so it kind of is scary to have quite a small animal and with such big isopods, just because the isopods are carnivorous, or at least omnivorous. They will eat anything, so... They won't attack anything, but they will eat anything, so it's just, it's worrying. There we go. There we go. 
And then this lid is fine. There's that. And then they're fine. I'm gonna go take the plant and wash out their enclosure and the plant. So that is it for this video. I feel bad for not filming them growing up more, but the thing is, is that I'm gonna have a lot of opportunity to do that in the future. So if I ever wanna do a serious documentary of the crest gecko growing up, I could like film it every single day or something and I'll have the opportunity to raise crest geckos like that. So it's not that big of a deal, but there's really not that much to show. I mean, you pretty much just do the same thing for a long time until forever. That's you pretty much, they're, they're pretty much the same to keep forever. You just upgrade the enclosure. But anyway, hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, I weigh the animals to make sure that they're growing and doing well and everything. So that is why the, this video is a thing. So I hope that you guys enjoyed, like I said, and then like, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. There's this cool subscribe thing that if you click it, magic, magic happens. So do that and have a fantastic day.